Hello friends, my name is Keita Doll and welcome to my channel. In my short little stardew life, I've watched my little baby wines and cheeses grow up into fine, upstanding adult wines and cheeses. But after waving goodbye to them as I tossed them into the shipping bin, I couldn't help but wonder, was it all worth it? Today, I want to try to get a better idea of just how good Stardew Valley casks are for making money. There is a variety of processing equipment to make farm produce and artisan goods, but how does the cask fit in? I'm going to get my team of scientists to crutch some numbers and hopefully they can tell us if and when casks are the way to go. If you find this interesting, please like and subscribe. It really does help and I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. In Stardew Valley, as you upgrade your house, you'll be given the option to build a cellar as your third upgrade. With the construction of the cellar comes a complimentary 33 casks, as well as the ability to craft additional casks for 20 wood and one hardwood. Overall, it's pretty cheap to craft. The cask can be used to upgrade the quality of other artisan goods like cheese, beer, and wine. They only function in the cellar though, so you can't go too crazy with them even if you wanted to. So if we have a cask, what are the best things to put in them and how much do we earn per day by doing so? Here's a list of some of the top performers. As you can see, a lot of these take a pretty long time to get to iridium quality. You can remove them early by hitting them with a pickaxe, but you'll lose any partial credit between hitting the silver, gold, and iridium quality thresholds. Starfruit wine is a clear winner, making over 56 gold per day. Ancient fruit wine and the goat cheese still do pretty good with around 40 gold per day. After that, we'll see a pretty big drop off with a few different options between 12 and 23 gold per day. Okay, that's great and all, but how good are these numbers? Let's compare with some alternatives. Cheese does relatively well in casks, but it's all dependent on cows and we can't keep them in the cellar as much as I'd like to. We can also easily outpace milk production just by putting cheese presses in the barn. So it really makes more sense to compare it with something else more scalable, like crops, dried fruit, preserves, and keg products. Before we go any deeper, let's get a few assumptions out of the way. We're going to assume that we are level 10 farming and that we've picked tiller and artisan professions. These will affect average crop quality and sell prices for the crops and artisan goods. If you're at a lower level or decided to go with the rancher route, the numbers will look a little different. First up, let's jump all the way back to the beginning of the process to the base ingredients. We have a few crops for comparison chosen based on a few criteria. If we're going to compare gold per day to cask in the cellar, we better be able to grow those in the cellar. That means we're using garden pots. So we'll have to have unlocked the greenhouse and it means that the ancient fruit is off the table. Those ancient roots like the deep penetration that garden pods just don't allow. We're also very lazy and we don't want to have to water or replant our crops. So we're going to use the deluxe retaining soil recipe from Ginger Island and a crop that will regrow indefinitely. The one exception is star fruit, just because it sells for so much. It might be good enough to warrant the extra work, so we'll leave it here for comparison. This means we will only be accounting for seed costs of starfruit since in the long run, all of the other crop seeds will be negligible. Okay, so based on that, here are some of the numbers that you can expect from just crops. Now, you might be thinking, hey, aren't those numbers almost as high as the starfruit wine gold per day in a cask that we saw earlier? And to that, I say, well, uh, yeah. So if these basic crops are already competing with casks, what does that mean for the other artisan equipment? For the processing equipment, we'll be looking at dehydrators, preserves jars, and kegs. We're going to round their processing times up to the nearest day, mainly because of laziness again. I didn't want to have to be checking up on these things all the time. With that being said, if you're a stickler for time management, you will be able to squeeze out a bit more gold per day, especially for making pale ale from hops in a keg. If we look at just potential gold per day for each piece of equipment, we can get kind of a goofy looking graph. Dehydrators have such a crazy throughput that everything else just gets blown away. They can churn through 35 times the fruit that a keg can. There's just one problem. 
you also need a ton of fruit to keep them running. Since we're limiting ourselves to just the cellar, we will need to account for artisan equipment as well as all of the garden pots and plants needed to supply them. For example, one pineapple plant can support one keg, which can support eight casks, while we would need 20 strawberry plants to support a single dehydrator. If we calculate how much equipment each plant can support, then we can compare them all on a per tile basis. Check out this chart showing gold per day per tile for each process endpoint. I was actually surprised at how well blueberries and strawberries did just as the base fruit and in dehydrators. They're actually somewhat competitive with some of the best fruits in those cases. Of course, the more valuable base fruits scale better with the slower processing equipment. Pineapple is kind of an interesting case since it almost doesn't matter how you process it as long as you have the right number of plants per equipment. As far as star fruit goes, I'll leave it up to you to decide if it's worth it. Regularly buying seeds, planting, and fertilizing seems like a lot of added work. It will benefit from Deluxe Speed Grow, which you can pick up at the Desert Oasis for 80 gold. The growth speed increase will boost the gold per tile of star fruit wine by about 20%, but then you can't use retaining soil in your pots, so you'll actually have to water them every day as well. Even with the extra gold that it earns over something like a pineapple, it's a bit too much work for me, but maybe you guys aren't as lazy as I am. All right, I know what you're thinking. Why hasn't she talked about hops yet? Okay, okay. The big green elephant in the room is this stack of stinky green hops that turn into literal gold in the form of pale ale. Hops beat everything in a keg on a per tile basis, and that's assuming a two day processing time. Diligent farmers can get two batches of pale ale every three days, which will bump up the gold per tile by another 20%. The only downside, hops regrow daily and will need to be harvested religiously. You'll also have to refill kegs at least once every other day. Something like pineapple, on the other hand, is super easy. The fruit is ready every seven days and so are the kegs, so you really only need to check up on them once a week. One last note about this graph and the thing that was really meant as the main takeaway from all of this. You can see the gold per tile for the cask drops when compared to each other piece of artisan equipment that we looked at. So does this mean that we're always better off replacing casks with some ratio of plants and garden pots and their respective processing equipment? Is the cask total trash? Well, maybe. So when does it make sense to use a cask? Maybe you're a rancher. If you're sticking with just animals, you may as well throw your cheese in these things. For cheese, they give some good value without taking too long to process, so there isn't much of a downside. You may want to temporarily use them to get a few higher quality items on hand. This can be some really good gifts for villagers, especially on birthdays. You'll probably want at least one silver star wine for the missing bundle and stocking up on a few iridium quality items for the Stardew Valley Fair Grange display and the Luau potluck might be a good idea too. If you can't grow enough crops to fill all of your processing equipment and you don't have garden pots or deluxe retaining soil yet, it might make sense to start throwing wine into casks rather than trying to add kegs that can't be filled. And lastly, maybe you just don't have the materials to build out a bunch of other processing equipment in the cellar. If you don't have anything else to put in place of the cask, you might as well use it, as long as you don't mind having to wait a little while to get your money. After seeing all of these calculations, I don't think I'll ever look at casks the same. They seem to be made out to be the pinnacle in the production of artisan goods. In reality, they look more like a throwaway item. As soon as you've gotten a few items that you need from them, assuming that you've got enough props and equipment to replace them. As always, I want to know what you guys think. Do you like the slow and steady cast? Has this made you rethink any of your seller equipment plans? Let me know in the comments if I missed anything cool about casks or their competitors. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed or learned anything new, please give it a like and subscribe or come say hello to me on Twitch. Until next time. Goodbye.